not Father Philip Davis. I'm Father Augustine. We have switched um, talks because I need to go on mission after this, so uh, remember me in your prayers uh, that we have, I have a safe journey. And re always remember the, the missionary priests, if you would, please. The spirit of the world consists essentially in the denial of the supreme dominion of God, a denial which is manifested in practice by sin and disobedience. Thus it is principally opposed to the spirit of Christ, which is also that of Mary. It manifests itself by the concupiscence of the flesh, by the concupiscence of the eyes, and by the pride of life. By disobedience to God's laws and the abuse of created things, its works are first sin in all its forms and in all else by which the devil leads to sin, works which bring error and darkness to the mind and seduction and corruption to the will. Its pomps are the splendor and the charms employed by the devil to render sin alluring to persons, places, and things. From the book True Devotion to Mary Saint by St. Louis Marie de Montfort. And so we have the idea of the world and renouncing it opposed to Mary and Christ and the work of redemption. Lay not up to yourselves treasures on earth where the rust and moth doth consume and where thieves break through and steal, but lay up to yourselves treasures in heaven where neither the rust nor the moth doth consume and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where thy treasure is, there is thy heart also. And I think this really sets the tone of renouncement of the world for us as Catholics. We owe it to ourselves to seek our greatest good. We as Catholics know this to be heaven, know this to be our eternal salvation. But we as earthlings get distracted. We get distracted from the seeking. We become complacent with temporal success. We don't fight against the lull of the sea that swarms us, that carries us away in this veil of tears. We don't even realize we're distracted from seeking. We don't realize we're distracted from our true goal. Even the goal in this life living in union with Christ every day. Every day we have this opportunity. And here we are today on the day of recollection to recollect, collect our thoughts, our thoughts and our desires as we've accumulated over our lives and especially over these last few days we've been here coming together, an abundance of grace has been spread and shed down upon us. And thus we renew our true desire. Every man desires truth. He seeks it, whether he knows it or not. And the truth is, as our Lord said, this world will pass away. We know we all must die. It's inevitable. It's going to happen to every one of us. Death is going to come for you and for me. Maybe we all live, say on average, another 50 years. And then we die, and, and 100 years after we die, 150 years from now, no one will remember us. No one will know our name. Because this earth is passing. And maybe even the famous people of our time, a hundred years, two hundred years from now, people don't remember all the things that they do. And they're laying up treasures here on earth. So it is, we renew again our true desire, the seeking. Seeking heaven. Knowing this truth about the temporal things of this world, that they will pass away. 
So we desire all the things that help us to gain this goal, to gain heaven. Namely, our Catholic faith and our devotions. But what have we learned these past few days? How have we been moved? We need to put these new inspirations to good use. Not just listening to these conferences to no avail. No, we need to progress. And this denotes a bit of effort on our part, a struggle. As we know, an object at rest tends to stay at rest. So as we have become complacent here in this earthly veil of tears, it is difficult for us to change. It is difficult to progress, and this is part of the struggle. It's an old dog and new tricks type of dilemma. So for this effort, this struggle to again discipline ourselves and begin anew with a new vigor for the Catholic faith. We have to, we, we need to know where we are. We need to know where we, are, where we are so that we can know where we're headed. It's very important that we reflect upon ourselves and study ourselves. This is part of our, our day of recollection. Reflecting upon ourselves. What, what state are we in the spiritual life? Where do we want to excel to? Where do we see ourselves in the future? And how can we get there? And so we need to know where we are. We need to know what to work on or what to reinvigorate our effort towards. So we reflect, studying the problem that is our current position, because we're not in heaven. We're not, we have yet to reach our goal, but we have the means here to do so. Thus we, we reflect, we step back from the normal motion of the day and take some time as one we pray, we lift our mind and heart to God. We do not scurry about doing all the things of the day. We stop. We pause. Our body slows down. Even our heartbeat slows. But our soul, our soul becomes freer. So too in our recollection, we free the mind so that we can focus. So now we turn our focus to this topic, renouncement of the world. What is this renouncement of the world? What it truly is, is a turning to God with our whole being. Because here we are in this veil of tears, surrounded by all the earthly distractions, And we get distracted away from our truth, our true seeking, as I've said. So now we have to reflect, what, what is our self? As we turn to God with our whole selves, what is our self? What do we have? What can we say is us? We have this physical body, our senses, our mind. And we have also our spiritual being, our soul. As St. Paul says, this is the war, the battle between the flesh and the spirit. Why? Because we have, since Adam's sin, a fallen human nature, a nature inclined to sin. And when our flesh is sufficiently provided for, it's not seeking self-preservation, but then self-comfort. And this gives in to our complacency very interesting to note when I go on missions the people are so grateful because maybe I come once a month or once every three months or some such thing when they, when they finally receive the sacraments they're so grateful because they're trying to live their lives they're trying to live a Catholic life and so separated 
from the normal Catholic atmosphere that we have here every day. And so, so too with our body, when it becomes provided for sufficiently, then it seeks its comfort. Even more in this day and age, we don't toil directly for our daily bread. We're not, out, we're not hunters and gatherers anymore. We're not farming the land as, as they, they did in the, the turn of the century. Now we have such an abundance of purchasing power, we're using it to seek entertainments, relaxations. Good, and this is good because we need relaxation. As they say, a bow always bent will break. So we need to take time away from the, the toil of our day. However, when they become an end in themselves, we have a problem. For we know our true end to be heaven, which we rightly seek. When we have that advertence, that consciousness of mind, that cognizance of our true desires, when we stay focused, Thus we see how the world can get away, get in the way, as it sidetracks us on these tangents. Tangents which can last years. People spend quite a lot of time. You look at athletes and people that have these, these hobbies that get in the way of their spiritual life. They get in the way of their prayer lives. Some years ago at the Fatima Conference, Father Bernard Utley gave a talk and he mentioned in there even about the Vatican II and the problems with the church. It's very good to know and be aware of. But be aware this too can become a distraction from our faith. So it's very important that we stay focused on what is the faith. But it's difficult because when one is distracted, he doesn't realize it. He's distracted. So we lose sight of our true goal for these means, these, these tangents, rather than focusing on self-advancement in the spiritual life, self-progress. For our relaxation, relaxations and entertainments, these should be a means. They are good. They should be a means for us to get to heaven. If they are anything but, then we know they are distractions, leading us away from God. This is the devil's plan, to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Deceive them into thinking that they are okay, plodding on in the same old fashion, without the effort of a burning desire for progress. This is renouncement of the world. Knowing ourselves, knowing what we have. Then making the decision here and now to turn it to God, to use it for good. The decision to join the winning team and of being an asset to that team because we're all working together for our salvation. We can help one another by a good example, by our prayers, by our sacrifices. We have this choice to make in general is when we make acts of faith throughout the day by our works. When we practice our faith, being charitable to one another, suffering each other's faults. In particular, in our daily seemingly indifferent actions. It's very important that we realize this. Everything we do is for good or for evil. They're not indifferent. We need to have that intention to use them for good. Use them for our true end. And thus, we renounce the world, joining Our Lady's army, the army established in Genesis where the war began. And Bishop has already brought this up. The woman, 
Genesis 3.15, I will put enmities between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. She will crush thy head. The world is being used by Satan. He has a plan striving to drag everyone to hell. trying to deceive even the elect, if possible. And we renounce it by using all we have to stay focused on our goal, gaining heaven. Thus we renounce it by using every action as a means whereby we grow, whereby we progress. Whereby we grow closer to living that union with Christ. And we know In the beginning, God created. We know the story of creation, but do we reflect on it very often? He took the slime of the earth and breathed into it a living soul. What do we have that we could say absolutely is ours and ours alone? God gave us our very being our very existence. We owe it all to him. Even more, God holds us in existence. He keeps all things together. Without his governing power, all things would drift back to nothingness. The devil and the world pull away from God. They distract us. They they tear us away from God. Where do they pull us to? Back to nothingness. Back to sin. Without God, there is nothing. We already realize that he holds all things he created in existence. And so we know... In the beginning, in the beginning, we know there was nothing, and then he created. We have this body and soul, which you know from St. Paul is in a battle, in a battle with each other, because we have needs both physical and spiritual, the flesh and the spirit, and they both have legitimate ends, legitimate needs that need to be provided for. But we remember the two armies, Satan and Our Lady. Satan wants us only to remember our physical needs so that our spirit perishes. But God knows our plight, and so he sent our help. He established the means of grace in this life. Even he sends us graces every day if we but convert our everyday actions and do them for the love of God. As St. Paul says, whether you eat or drink, do all for the love of Christ. So having this opportunity to love God and live in union with him all the day long, if and when we get distracted, let us turn back to him. Let us renounce the world. Let us remove the distractions from our our lives. And today, we have in distinction to the Catholic way of life. We have the liberals who are trying to overrun this country. They've come up with a new line of thought. As we see, the world today is so upside down. And again, as Bishop said, we could never have imagined it. It's too crazy. Nevertheless, this is our reality. One term they use is a social construct. They continually blame things that they don't like, that they don't agree with because of their upside-down reasoning. They blame it on 
our traditional societal practices. Social constructs, however, are good, as the society is good. Society is to protect man. We know man is a social being. Man needs other men. How many of us have had our wisdom teeth removed or any dentistry work? How many of us have done it ourselves? I'm thinking no one. So we need each other. We, we need each other for a decent living. So also we have the government, we have the police, firemen, doctors. Society is for the basic, is for the benefit of the basic unit of society, for the benefit of man, when it is used to protect us from dangers, when it upholds the rights of indig individuals. And we know the basic unit of society is the family. And so society should be protecting the family, but we see it now as it's been turned on its head. The devil uses it to war against the family. All these institutions out there, all these ideas, are to break up families and to separate them because the devil knows that united and under the true order established by God, we will stay focused, and we will save our souls. One might ask then, how has it come to be as we know it? Well, the devil is crafty. Even though God told him Our Lady would crush his head, he still tries to drag to hell as many souls as he can. As I said, he knows man has everything he needs for his success, for the success of saving his soul. So how can he thwart their efforts? He uses the very means themselves. As we've seen, he uses society. Thus he uses the institution of the post-Vatican II Church to lead so many astray from the faith. Thus he uses society to pervert, to pervert the minds of the youth. And as we, we can't say too much, deceive, if possible, even the elect. He does this by distracting us from our true end, by getting us locked into our daily toil, that we don't, we don't realize we can use this for our spiritual success. So he has taken man, he has taken society, and removed God. Man without God is not a pretty thing. If we remove God, all of creation cannot exist. If we remove God from just man, man sinks back to sin. We need God's grace, and so we need to stay focused on God's grace. Without God, we cannot but sin. Without God, chaos reigns. The chaos of our fallen human nature, seeking the all in, all in the inordinate society with God removed. So social constructs, society, is a good thing when they protect us, when they keep us focused, as we have here, a Catholic society, a parish. It's very important to promote parish unity, that we protect each other by, by good examples and by our prayers from the ways of the world that which we, we renounce, we seek to renounce. But now, the society of the world, we have God removed. 
and as Christ is the light that shines in the darkness, without him, society is in darkness. They have so much illogic, so much wrong thinking. We see society is on its path, drifting back to its nothingness from whence it came. As when Christ came the first time, St. John spoke of it in the last gospel. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. We renounce the world because they have renounced Jesus. They walk in darkness. We seek the light, the light of truth. We we as Catholics have the light, the light of the faith. And we love it and we practice it every day, waking up, praying our morning prayers. However, we also still live in the world. So we have this, this struggle this battle waging for our soul. The contemplative orders found their solution to this. They wanted to begin heaven right now, so they provide for the bare minimum of their bodily needs. And that this effect is twofold. It keeps our flesh at bay, it keeps the the perils of, of comfort and in eating too much, etc., at bay. And then it also calls down graces in our sacrifices. They preserved life just barely. Then they sought to begin heaven on earth, contemplating God, keeping their focus at all times. So as best they could, knowing they will only see God as he truly is in heaven, still they desired to consume themselves with thoughts of God. They tipped the scales in the right direction, striving for that union with Christ in everything that they do. They knew what a temporal success could do to them, what it could mean. Many of them even came from nobility, great noble families with immense amounts of wealth. But they turned away because they knew it could be to the demise of their soul, their spiritual demise. They feared temporal success would tear them away from their spiritual success which we all know is vastly more important. And I know you're all saying, but wait a minute, Father, are we all supposed to become religious? No. We're supposed to become saints, and I'm not so sure, short of a miracle, we would if everyone joined today as religious. It's possible, but God calls us where he wants us. Then how do we as way, lay women and men begin heaven on earth? We still ought to meditate and think of God as often as we can. Provide for our physical needs, yes. But remember our spiritual needs. And so we ought to take those thoughts, those meditations, use them as a motivation for our actions. Parents have a lot to deal with. Get the kids up, feed them, dress them, get them to school, clean the house, repair the house, go to work, repair the cars, pay the bills. Massive amount of problems. But the the daily toil is, is a wearying thing. But it can be uplifting. As St. Augustine says, 
it can be a labor of love. If you labor out of love, then there is no labor except the labor of love. When we labor out of love for God, when all things become a means to our end rather than a mean end in themselves, it keeps us on track. It supernaturalizes our lives. And so routine is good to stay on track, but we need to reflect where is it going. So we are here today, this day of recollection, to examine ourselves. Where are we going? Be sure we're not asleep at the wheel. Wake from our routine of the world, which is toiling simply for filthy lucre's sake, and supernaturalize our, our daily tasks. Raise every day to its greatest potential. And so we have to be spiritually conscious. We have to be aware of our struggle, aware of our position, and what we're doing to fight in this battle. As we know we have a fallen human nature that is hard to overcome. And God knows our struggle. He wants our spiritual success. He loves us. He loves us so much, he established the redemption. He didn't just end it with Adam and Eve. He knew the beauty of our love. Man, lowly creatures that we are, we're able to love God. We're able to give up our will and love God. We're able to overcome our very nature. The angels have made their decision. They were tried and they decided and it's final. They have chosen. Man has the continual trial. The continual ability to love God. These trials are the proofs for our loves. They are the means for us to love God. To say, no, I do not choose this. I choose God. I renounce the world. I renounce all the things in it because I choose God over it. And so God, wanting our success, he continually sends his grace. And so he sent us Mary, the woman. The woman who is to reverse our human condition. To overcome our human nature. Again, as Bishop has said, Eve, the first woman, aided in the fall through the tree. So Mary aided in the redemption through the tree of the cross. Keeping this before our mind as our motivation is key for renouncing the world. Sin and sacrifice. Hatred and love. Understanding that it is these extremes. Because if we get too involved in the world, it will suck us in. It will distract us. So yes, as we live out in the world, we're in the world, but not of the world. We're using all these daily tasks of the world, we're supernaturalizing them and living for God, living for Christ. So in our Catholic homes, we should be reminded in every room, every room should have a crucifix on every wall. there should be some reminder of our Catholic faith. What are our homes like? Are they Catholic sanctuaries away from the world? Most, we all have kitchens with tables and countertops. We have bedrooms. We have our living room where our couches are, our lazy boy, 
very aptly named. Most usually, we have centered there the big screen. Where is God? Where is his place? Where is God in the home? Where is his room? Do we at least have an altar set up? At least over the mantle? Enshrine the sacred heart image. Devotion to the sacred heart is, is so key. Do we have a place in our homes where we can go to pray? If not, where is God in our lives? Just that church? Renounce, renouncement of the world begins in our homes. Cast it out. Do not let it in. This should be our Catholic sanctuary. And as Saint, Pope St. Saint Pius X admonishes us, Restore all things in Christ. Make sure Christ is the head of your household. What part of our lives does the world not enter? What part of the lives do we have where we're not influenced by the world? which we remember is being used by the devil to distract us. Phones are everywhere. God should be everywhere to us. Again, the spiritual writers say, be always as you would in the sight of God, for there you always are. God is everywhere. But we lose focus of it. We're distracted. And so we have every Easter, once a year, the renewal of our baptismal promises, renouncing Satan and his works, his pomps and display. That is the showiness of the world, the pomps and display of, of Satan. And we renounce it, knowing it is a distraction from our, new, our true end. However, it shouldn't end there. For we are Christians. That is, we are followers of Christ. And Christ said, If any man come to me and hate not his own life, he cannot be my disciple. How can we hate our life? Well, here Christ has just told the parable of, the, of a great supper where many guests were invited but they had occupations, things that didn't allow them to come to the supper. These occupations pulled, us, pulled them away from the meal, and it's obvious the supper is the kingdom of heaven. The point is to hate all that separates us from Christ, all that occupies our lives and draws us away from him. But you may ask, can we not then be successful in this life? It's our motive that separates us from Christ. Why do we do these things? Are they a means to our end or an end in themselves? Society can be a help. But a help for what? So we can all live in huge mansions? If we gain literally the whole world and we own everything, the entire planet, or even all the planets in our galaxy, it's not worth our salvation. Do you renounce Satan? Do you renounce his works and palms? Do you renounce being temporarily successful at the cost of spiritual success? And so after today, we'll have had our talks. Grace will have been spread in abundance over all of us. It is for us to decide what the effect will be. 
as at the end of confession, we pray the act of contrition. And at the end, we pray, I resolve with the help of thy grace to amend my life. Amendment means a change. This is essential for a good confession, for having true sorrow means the willingness to change. Willingness not to sin again, therefore do something different, therefore change. We must change something, but what? And so to answer this, we must examine ourselves. Look at our position. We can't know what to fix without knowing what's broken first. And as we must progress, the first step is to see where we are. Put treasures in heaven. This means anything done for success in this life alone, it does not equal spiritual success. Let us not be one who is too busy. Don't fill all of our time with things so that when opportunities of grace come, we cannot cooperate with them. We do this by keeping the mind, in the mind the truth. This world will pass away. What really matters is that we don't flee as the apostles did in the time of our persecution, in the time of sacrifice. One remained, and Christ wishes all of us to remain. Thus, he gave us the means to remain, the means to reverse the human condition. He said to St. John, he says to all of us, Behold thy mother. Behold, she who will protect you and see even to your bodily cares and help you prepare to receive our Lord when he approaches you. Remembering his first coming, coming and the tragedy of, uh, for the people of Israel, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. They did not receive him because they were distracted and blinded by the ideals of the world. They were seeking an earthly kingdom. That's what they desired. So now we seek the kingdom of heaven with our whole being. Renounce then the world. Turn from it. Turn to God with all your might. Look at society today, today again. You have these, these giant corporations, Google and Twitter. They're being used to sway public opinion. They're being used by the devil. People are, are fighting over politics, and even conservatives don't have the true Catholic basis for anything. Society is all but gone. All we have to do is realize it holds nothing of true value for us. We need to keep in mind our true objective, then use all that we have, just as the devil is using all he has. We need to use every dime, every breath, every thought to gain heaven. We do this by beginning and ending all things in, through, and with, and for Jesus. We keep our focus through grace. We gain grace through our mother. Imitate her. Know her. Remain at the cross and turn from the world. And behold thy mother. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.